Free editing software is very hard to put into the same sentence as professional editing software. But if all you need to do is the basics without a hiccup, then Shotcut is a solid option. So let's get started. First, jump over to the shotcut.org website and download it. I can't tell you the difference between FossHub and GitHub. All I can say is that I flipped a coin and downloaded GitHub and it was fine. Let's have a look at the Shotcut Pros. Simplicity. You can drag clips into the playlist and to load them and then pull them down into the timeline as you would expect. The layout can be reordered to suit your style of working by pulling apart the various windows and putting them where you think you need them. Exporting is simple and all the defaults for everything I tried were the conventional options. So if you're not sure, always go with the default. It should keep you out of trouble. The timeline. The timeline has a magnetic feature like Final Cut Pro. And this means when you want to line clips up with each other, they lock together automatically without any fiddly adjustments. The default options again give you a good option with the audio waveforms showing to help with cuts. You can add video or audio layers. And this means you can stack media where needed for A roll and B roll options without any issues. Color grading. You can add a white balance layer, and if you've filmed a white card during the shoot, you can use this to guess the best temperature. After that, you can add a color grading layer, and the three color wheels offer a not very subtle, but nevertheless clear set of options for color grading the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Chroma keying. This works surprisingly well because this is usually where free editing falls short or doesn't even offer it. Shotcut has a simple option and an advanced option and even the advanced isn't difficult to use. With an additional alpha channel adjust setting, it can clean up most keying to a fairly professional standard. As always, this will depend on the quality of the footage shot. Stability. One of the great horrors of free editing software is that it can crash. That on its own is not really a problem, except it can take a whole load of your unsaved work with it. Shotcut did in fact crash on me once, but when I reopened it, it asked if I wanted to start from the autosave, and there was my project still intact at the point where I left off. Well done, Shotcut. Now, onto the Shotcut cons. There's not much here. Text. Well, the text options are pretty run of the mill. I mean, they're there and you can pull in your fonts so everything looks the same as your other videos, but uh, don't expect too much from customizing. You can easily resize and the basic animations like slide ins or slide ups are also there in their own preset folder, but they're not easy to change from the default, at least not without diving into the tutorials on the website, which is very thorough, by the way. Shortcuts. More shortcuts would be nice, but at least the undo option, Command Z, is the same as other platforms. You'll find that handy when learning a new editing software. But other than that, it's not the quickest way to navigate at first. My conclusion, this is a great way to start editing if you don't want to spend any money just yet, and it's available on Mac, Windows, or Linux. All the basics are covered, and in the case of chroma keying, it's actually better than iMovie. At some point though, you'll need to upgrade if you want to get your editing to be more professional. If that was helpful, but you're on Mac, then check out this video for an iMovie review, or this video on the basics of how to edit a vlog if you want to learn first principles. Want to subscribe if you haven't already? We're on a channel growing mission, and we want to help your channel along with us by sharing everything we're learning as we go. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly of YouTube channel growth.